Okay, so we have made our very first web page. It's very clean, it's got the basic information. It's white, has black text. There's nothing exciting about this web page. Nothing fun about this web page. So we're going to add what I like to call the pretty, where we get to add some colors and put some pictures in and make it more interesting for our users to look at. Okay. So whenever I'm doing this, I'm constantly going to go back and forth between Notepad, where my code is, in the browser where I get to preview the web page. First thing you should know before we add any of the pretty though, this web page is not on the internet. We have not uploaded it to a web server. So the only place this web page is at is on our local computer where we've got it saved at. So don't think you're, you're putting your stuff out on the internet where other people can find it because we have not done that. All right, so I need to go back to my code so I can make some changes in my code. I'm going to leave my browser open. I'm going to come back to Notepad. I closed my web page in Notepad, and I did that on purpose because I wanted to show you something. So I'm going to click on File, Open. I'm going to go to my, um, my folder where I'm saving my web page, my one IDT, double click on it. And you can see right now there is nothing in that folder right you don't see anything it just says name no items match your search here why it shows that is because i'm trying to open it in notepad and by default notepad looks for text files okay the dot txt well that's not what we're trying to open we're trying to open up a html file so i have to and i'm sorry it's cutting it off on my screen here come down to file name and there's an arrow drop that down and don't listen to me that's not what I wanted sorry about that come over here where it says text document down at the bottom drop that arrow down change it to all files when you do that you're going to see every single kind of file that you have in your folder and now we can see our first .html and we can see this picture I've got so I'm going to double click first.html and there's my code right back. So now I can start editing or adding to my code. First thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go inside of my body element. When I say inside of the body element, I mean between the word body and that closed wicket. Okay, right in this space right here. I'm going to add what's known as attributes. Attributes help further define what's going on with the body very important that you get these things in the right order we always start with the less than sign the open wicket then we have to have the tag in our case the the tag is body so body has to follow the wicket and everything else we add to it is going to follow the word body the first attribute i'm going to use is style s-t-y-l-e okay this is an attribute and it's going to um, further define body but I'm going to give my attribute some values. I'm going to type in equal because that's going to separate my attribute from further information. I'm going to open up a quotation mark. I'm going to change the color of my background. Right now my background is white because that's default, but I can change it to a different color. I'm going to type the word background hyphen color and colon, and I'm going to make my background purple. So I'm going to type the word purple followed by a semicolon, okay? Close my quotation mark. I'm gonna save, file, save. I'm gonna switch back over to my web page in the browser, and I'm going to refresh. You may have a refresh icon. Um, mine's being cut off on my screenshot, so I'm gonna use the F5 on my keyboard. Again, I'm on a PC. If you're on a Macintosh, it might be a little bit different, but whatever your shortcut is to refresh. Ta-da! Beautiful purple background, okay? It's reading that instruction. Okay, so far so good. Actually, I don't like the purple, so I'm going to come into my code, and I'm going to change purple. Let's try green. Just type the word green. There are 216 color names that you can put in, so you can just kind of play around with some different colors. Switch back over to your web page, refresh, F5, 
Now I got a green background. Let's try, go back to Notepad. I want to try a black background. So I'm going to replace my green with black. And I'm going to save. <clears throat> and I just did a control S. I did a keyboard shortcut. That's why you didn't see me save. Come back over here to um, Windows Explorer. Or my, I'm sorry, my browser and F5. And there's my beautiful background. Wait a minute. There's a problem. What happened to my text? It's there, right? You saw it. Anybody know what happened to the text? Absolutely right. We've got a black background. We've got black text. You can't see the text. If I mouse over it, though, it's all right there. Okay? So how do we fix this problem? Well, there's a couple things we could do. We could go change our black background to something else. But what if we really like that black background? We could add a color to our text. Our text doesn't have to be black. Okay, so let's do that. We need to be position our cursor so we're in between the semicolon following black and that quotation mark that we had at the end. I'm going to put a space. Now, my attribute is style. We can put a lot of different values in with that style. Okay, so that's as long as I'm in my, inside my quotation marks, I'm adding to the style that's affecting the body. To change the color of my text, it's the word color colon what color do I want my text to be let's just go with white because I think white would be easy to see on that black background so it's white semicolon so now I've got color colon white semicolon okay that's what I just typed right there I need to save come back over here to my browser refresh and there you go black background white text we can read everything we're doing good so far. When we look at the font itself, you're probably familiar when you go into Microsoft Word and you drop down the font list and you see all those different fonts that you can choose from. Well, we can do the same thing in Word in um, HTML, except we don't have a drop down list. We actually have to know what those fonts are called. By default, your font is most likely going to show up as Times New Roman. When you're looking at my web page right here on the screen, you're seeing Times New Roman because that is the default on Mrs. Rush's computer. Yours might show up something different depending on what your computer's default is set at. Okay, I'm going to come into my code. I'm going to position my cursor in between the semicolon that follows white and the quotation mark. I'm going to make a space. To change the actual style of the text, it's called font-family, and I can change what that's going to look like, colon, by picking one of the fonts that happens to be installed on my computer. I have Bookman, space, old, space, style. Okay. I know that because I cheated. I went into Microsoft Word. I dropped down the list and said, hmm, what looks good? And I picked one, and I have to type it in code exactly how that uh, font is named. And in this particular case, it's Bookman space old space style. If I close it all up together, it's not going to work. And I ended it with a semicolon. So let me go ahead and save and come back over here to my browser, and I'm going to refresh. And you can see my font changed. Bookman is a little bit of a bigger font. It's a little bit more spread out. I like it. I'm going to keep it. But you can go ahead and play around with different fonts. Now, here's the word of caution when it comes to fonts. Fonts only work if they're installed on the user's computer. I did Bookman Old Style. You may not have Bookman Old Style. So if I coded this web page in Bookman Old Style as my font family, and I upload it to a web server, and you go view it on the internet, but you don't have Bookman Old Style, you're still going to see this web page in your um, default font, which could be Times New Roman or something else. So you really want to stick with what's known as web safe fonts. And there's about 16. You can Google, Google web safe fonts, and it'll show you the list of fonts. Bookman Old Style is probably not one of the, uh, one of the web safe fonts. Things like Arial, Georgia, Trebuchet, Times New Roman, Times Roman... Those are some of the web safe fonts. Helvetica. All right, back to our code. Let's try something different. 
let's take our name right here. I've got my um, H1 with Shannon Anderson Rush in it. And right now it's aligned to the left. That's default. If I don't do anything with my alignment, I'm going to get all my text on the left side of my screen. I'm going to move my text to the center. And I'm going to use a style attribute that's associated with the H1 tag. So I've clicked inside my H1 tag right after the one and before the close wicket. I'm going to put a space, add style, equal. And the style I'm going to use is called text hyphen align colon. What follows the colon, I have three choices. Left, well, that was default. Center, that's going to go horizontally in the middle of your screen. Or right, which horizontally would line up on the right. So I'm going to type center and semicolon and quote, close my quotation. And I'm going to save, come back over to the browser and refresh. And now my name has moved to the middle. Okay. Let's um, add that picture. You saw I had that picture in the folder. I'm going to go ahead and put that in. I'm going to put my picture between my name and the paragraph about me being a teacher at I Achieve Virtual Academy. So I'm going to make some real estate. I entered a few times. I'm going to open up a wicket. The tag to put in a picture is IMG. IMG is image without the A and the E. Now, image or IMG all by itself does absolutely nothing except tell the browser, hey, there's a picture here, but you won't actually see anything yet. It needs a little bit more. It has to have an attribute to work with it. And that attribute is source, SRC, it's um, source without the vowels. Order is real important. This is SRC. A really common mistake, especially beginning web designers do, is they'll put SCR. Okay, they'll transpose the R and the C, and that will cause a problem and it will cause your picture not to work. So make sure your syntax is correct. Okay, SRC equal, and I have to type the name of my picture. Well, I know my picture is just me.jpg. Oops, I misspelled, sorry, spelled it wrong. Me.jpg. Okay and close my quote there. So now I've told the browser that I'm going to put a picture and I've told it the name of the picture, which is what I did with the source attribute and the value is me.jpg. I need to make sure I have my picture saved in the same folder as my web page, as first.html, and I do. If they're not, um, your picture's not going to show up on your web page. Next thing I have to do is I'm going to Oops, sorry, typo, alt, is I have to put in what's known as some alternative text. The attribute for alternative text is just alt, A-L-T. Alternative text is really important. If the picture doesn't work, this alternative text will show up on your screen. And if you've ever been on the internet and you put your mouse over a picture and there was this little pop-up text, that was the alternative text. Another reason it's important is if your user is using a screen reader, okay, they're going to um, have the screen read the alternative text to them because obviously they can't see the picture. And I need to just give it a little bit of text that describes the picture. This is a picture of Mrs. Rush. Close my quote and... I'm going to put a slash at the end and close my wicket. The reason I put the slash at the end is because image is a one-sided tag. It doesn't have a separate open element and close element like everything else we've done so far. It just has an open. So it's known as self-closing. And we do put the slash at the end. Otherwise, we're going to have validation problems with HTML5. So now I'm going to save. And I'm going to check it in the browser, F5. And you will see that my picture did not work. That's what this little box right there is showing. And this is the alternative text I just put in. This is a picture of Mrs. Rush. And so I need to come back to my code and I need to figure out what I did wrong. IMG SRC equal me dot JPEG alt this is a picture of Mrs. Rush. Hmm, it's coded correctly, so let me go to my folder and I'm gonna double check. 
see my picture and my picture opened up so yeah I have no idea why this is not working I M G S R C equal me dot JPEG me dot JPEG spelled right oh ALT quotation quotation and I did save and let me go back and refresh F5 still doesn't work and I will be starting this video all over again